Hello and welcome back to this tutorial series. In this part we will get to the other side of this cliff here where we have a checkpoint where we can save our current position so when we fall down we will spawn on the other side. The first lesson is of course what happens if we just jump down here. Basically we will fall forever. So of course we need to fix this as well. For this let's open up the settings, world settings. Here you can see the current settings of our current level here. In this case we override the game mode with our third person game mode that is provided by the level here. We have our default pawn class, our character and some other classes that we take a look in further episodes. Let's take a look on the world settings which has this kill zone. So this is a global kill zone and it's currently deactivated as you can see. For this we go to advanced and enable the world bounce checks. Here you can now control the kill zone. So let's set it for example to minus 6000. If you want you can calculate this. So one unreal unit is one centimeter. So this would mean 6000 centimeter from the zero point down. Which is meaning when we hit play, but let's move the player start first. So let's take the player start for example Let's rotate it so that the arrow is pointing in this direction. So just for the, just for this purpose, we will move the player start right here and hit play, which means we start already here. And when we jump down, we get killed and reset it. Okay, the next task is to get to the other side. For this, let's take a platform, for example, this one back here. As we learned, we can say right click, browse to asset, and now we have the asset here in the content browser. And what we can do now, it's pretty easy. We just take it from the content browser and pull it inside the level. Let's move it down exactly to the platform, a little bit more forward here. And just for example, we can scale it a little bit like that. Let's make it a little bit more difficult as these platforms here. So let's move them a little bit more apart. So that's more difficult to jump over these platforms. Let's create another one with the old key as you remembered. This is a little bit, let's say bigger, like that. Okay. And we now hit play. We can jump over these platforms here. And this is a good point. We are not able to jump with a normal jump over this platform here. So it's very difficult. For this, we just hold the shift key. And as you can see, we run much faster. So let's take a look on that. We go to the content browser, we go back into the structure, back to the content. Then we have our third person blueprint, blueprints, and then we have our epic character. So let's take a look. First of all, we have our components. Let's open up the viewport. Here's our character. We have the character itself. We have a capture component, so the invisible capture right here. An arrow that we can just see where the character is pointing at. The mesh itself, so the character. A camera bomb, so this is the line that goes to the camera that is rotating and the follow camera itself. Also of course we have the character movement. We will take a closer look to these separate components in further episodes. Also of course we have the graphs, in this case the event graph, which contains all the functionality of this character here. And the good part is already commented, so you have the gamepad input, movement input, mouse input, the sprint, the player death, so what happens, and some other key bindings here. Let's take a closer look, of course, on the sprint here. We use a variable, so this is this part right here. So this is under character movement, of course, where we have the sprint speed and the walk speed. When we go to the window, details, we can take a closer look what each of these means. So we have the walk speed of 600 and then sprint speed of 1200. So exactly we double the speed of the character. 
by just press the button or release it. So which means when we press it, we have the double speed and when we release it, we have the normal speed again. And this is on the input action sprint. So which means when we walk, we have a 600 walk speed. When we press shift, we have the sprint speed, which is of course much easier to jump. So let's go back to the platforms here and we can jump over this. When we sprint, it's much easier as you can see. And now we are of course able to jump over this cliff here. Now we put a checkpoint here. So let's hit escape. And as you can see, this is the activity one destination of the first lesson of the hours of code project. For this, we go just back to the content here and just search for the checkpoint. There we have it, the blueprint checkpoint. We just pull it out and now we have two options. We can just, as we put it in the level, click on edit blueprint checkpoint or we hit double click on this inside the content browser here. So we open it up. It's also a blueprint actor similar to the character. So when we take a look on the character, you can see the parent class is character, but both of them are kind of an blueprint actor in this case. So let's take a closer look. We can close the character, of course, on the checkpoint. The good thing is everything is configured already. So let's take a look on the viewport. We have a default scene route, which is basically just the default component of the whole actor, basically nothing. In this case, we have a static mesh, which is this platform here. We have a ring, so a separate component, as you can see. And an interesting part is the structure. So as you recognized, when we move the platform, we move the ring as well. The reason is that this is a child component of this one here cause the structure is under this cylinder. So you can stack static meshes on each other so you can move it together. Then we have this sphere collision, just called sphere call, which is the trigger later for a character, the checkpoint transform, which is the paper sprite component, just in position where the character should spawn later, a checkpoint text, which is just set checkpoint and an arrow again for us that we can see where the checkpoint is pointing at. Let's take a closer look on the event graph where every functionality of every blueprint actor basically is. Of course, we start with this event, which is the on component begin overlap of the sphere collision. Let's open up the details of our sphere collision. Again, like every actor, we have a transform and some other parts here. But when we scroll down to the end, we have the events. These are the pre-configured events of this specific actor. So in this case, the sphere collision. And as you can see, we have this plus here on every part where we can click on and then we just add it to the event graph. As you recognized, we have here already the arrow. So when we click on it, we jump to the on component begin overlap, which is basically means when the character overlap, so touches the sphere collision, we trigger the event. Next, we have a branch, which means it controls and condition, true or false. This is what a Boolean means. A Boolean means it has two states, true or false. Basically, we have this variable, as you can see down here, checkpoint enabled, which is a Boolean. As I said, we have a status true or false. Of course, when we open up the details of this variable, you can see the default value is false, which means the default state when we touch it the first time will be false. So we continue and set it to true. So this means when we touch it the next time, it will be true and goes to nothing. Next, we change the color of the checkpoint to blue, because currently it's yellow. So then the player can see that it's turning blue and it means it's activated. Next, we cast to our third person game mode. So to home game mode, as I explained before, which means we need to get the game mode first and cast to our third person game mode. As I said, 
This is the game mode that we provided by the level here. This game mode contains the spawn location. So basically where the character is spawning. For this we have the checkpoint transform. And this is very simple, I can delete it because it's basically here. As I explained it before, we placed it in the paper spread component. And we just pull it out. Then we connect it to the target of the get world transform. The transform, as I explained, is the location, the rotation and the scale. And then we just set it as a variable for this. Let's take a closer look on the game mode. So let's go back to our level here. Go to the third person blueprint. And here we have the third person game mode. Let's take a little look inside here. Looks a little bit more complicated, but it's not that difficult. The most important part is, as I explained it, here we have the variables and we have a transform variable for the spawn location, which is, as you can see, do the respawn for the epic character that we have. But we will take a look later. So let's close this for a second and basically delete this one so that we can understand it. So what we do is we cast exactly to this game mode that we have. Then we can go from as third person game mode and say set spawn location. And it will already set here you have the default set spawn location, which is our variable. And then we just connect it. And as I said, we want to set it so our players start to this checkpoint wherever we place it. So we connect it and at the end we just have the play sound 2D. Very simple, we just play a sound. The good part is when you go to this loop here, so browse, we can check what it's doing. We have the little play button here so we can check what it's doing. It plays the sound. Nothing special. Let's go back to our checkpoint and it's already here. So we play the sound when we hit the checkpoint. We go back to our level and hit play. So now we jump over this platforms here. When we hold shift, we can run faster and there's the checkpoint. As you can see, it's yellow. It shows the text, but we don't see the collisions here. And also we can't see the arrow. So this is just for us as the developer to check where we place it. Let's overlap with it. So we just touch it. It plays the sound and turns the color to blue. Where we now jump down, we get spawned to the checkpoint. Great. In the next episode, we will take a look on this moving platform here and we will do a similar thing behind it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, please let me know and yeah, goodbye.